reach up to the top blade and if your fingertips could just go over the top, block, top of the blade there, then that's the right length, you've got it right. So that was me back in 2012 in one of the first videos I ever made explaining how to set up paddle length. Turns out I was totally wrong in that video. I mean it wasn't too bad. I was sharing what I'd learned from other instructors. I'd seen the reach up to the top of the paddle technique for setting paddle length and used a lot. I'd seen that online on other YouTube videos and I kind of assumed that that was in fact the best way to set paddle length. But over the past several years, helping hundreds of multi-sport paddlers set up their paddle for the coast to coast race, I've come to realize that the reach up to the top of the paddle method for setting paddle length just isn't that accurate and doesn't really achieve a good result for a lot of people. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through a totally new method that I've developed for setting your paddle length. And I can just about guarantee you wouldn't have seen this method anywhere else, at least not on YouTube. To help you understand how I got to my new method, I think it's worth going over some of the problems with the old method and some of the complexities and challenges involved when it comes to setting paddle length for different sized people, different kayaks and different blade sizes. The first obvious problem with this method is it's pretty inaccurate. I mean, it would change the length of your paddle if you're wearing shoes or not, or how thick your soles are. And it would definitely change depending on how flexible your shoulders are. I mean, some people just can't reach their arm straight up as easily as others. And you could just try a little harder, reach an extra centimeter higher, and now your paddle is a centimeter longer, which I guess doesn't sound like much, but I think one centimeter really matters. Now I sort of get where this old method came from. I mean, if you're taller, then you should be using a longer paddle. And if you're a shorter athlete, you should be using a shorter paddle. So it kind of roughly achieves that. But I've found that when paddlers are quite tall, you get these huge um, paddle lengths out of this method. And if you're quite short, then you get these like ridiculously tiny paddles that just don't work in reality. So we end up having to deviate the paddle based on you know, what looks right. So the method didn't really help us at all. And consider this, if you use the reach up method to set your paddle length, you're obviously including the length of each blade within your total paddle length. So if you choose different size blades, like you should for different purposes, then everything kinda has the potential to get thrown out of whack. For example, let's say that you normally paddle a 210 centimeter long paddle and that's got Gara Odin XS blades on it, right? The smallest blade size. And then next season, you upgrade your boat to something faster. You're stronger and fitter too, so you upgrade your paddle size to the Odin S, right? And those blades are one centimeter, roughly, longer than your previous blades. So now, do you just whack those blades on the same shaft and now this season you're paddling a 212 centimeter long paddle or do you decrease the shaft size by two centimeters so that your tip to tip length remains at 210. What I'd argue myself is that you should really leave the shaft length the same if that's correct for you and paddle a 212 centimeter paddle with those larger blades. The other aspect to this that I think we need to be super aware of is your actual grip width. And I think your grip width is way more important than your overall tip to tip length of your paddle. This is because in order to efficiently transmit power from your body through the paddle into the water, you really want your grip to be at the optimum width for your body, okay? You wanna be in the strongest position possible. So the way I used to help people set up their grip width was the same way that I'd seen virtually all other instructors do it, the same way I'd seen other people show us on YouTube. And that is to grab the paddle, stick it on your head, and then slide your hands out along the shaft until your elbows make a 90 degree bend, which is actually really hard to do by yourself, by the way. You need a mirror or someone to help guide you. But once you've got that 90 degree bend with the paddle on your head, that's supposedly the correct uh, grip width. What I've found is that when you actually do this with people, people's grip width becomes 
super wide and they're almost hanging on the blades quite often. So we have to tell people to shuffle their hands in a little bit. And for a while I was using a method where we'd say, okay, line up your middle finger with the inside crease of your elbow joint. And that seemed to be a bit better. One more thing before I get to my new method, and that is it's super important to make sure that we're able to perform a good catch. And that means getting the entire blade in the water at the catch position before we activate that power and take our stroke. And in terms of paddle setup, the best way we can help achieve that is make sure that we have enough reach length, which by that I mean the distance from the outside of your hand to the beginning of the power face. We need enough reach there so that we can comfortably reach over the boat into the water and get the entire blade face buried in the water for that good catch. If you change the length of the paddle, the position of your grip on the shaft, the blade size, even the boat width, that's going to have an impact on how easy and comfortable it is for you to get that full blade catch in the catch zone. Okay, so here's my solution to all of these issues. The first step I think should be making sure we know which kayak and which blade size we're going to be using. Now I'm not going to go into boat choice and paddle blade choice in this video too much, but what I will say briefly is that you should match those two things. So if you're paddling a more stable, slower boat, like the Barracuda Beachcomber, for example, you should be using a Gara Odin XS or a Flow MS1. These are like really small blade sizes. So you're in the right gear for that slower, more stable boat. If you're paddling a super fast kayak, like the Flow Rush, for example, one of the fastest boats on the market right now, I think you should be um, matching your blade size. So move up to something like the Odin uh, Medium or the Flow MS3, for example. So once you've determined what boat you're going to be using and what blade size you're going to be using, I think there are only two things that really matter in terms of paddle setup. Number one, you need enough reach from your hand to the start of the paddle blade to get that full powerful catch. Two, you want the most powerful, comfortable and efficient grip width for your size and body shape. Now to keep things as simple as possible, I'm going to suggest that only one thing matters when it comes to setting that reach distance, and that would be the width of your kayak at what I call the catch zone. To establish the width of your kayak at your catch zone, you're going to sit in your boat without a paddle, you're going to reach directly forward, rotating at the shoulders like you're about to take a stroke, and you're just going to place your hand directly forward on the deck of the kayak. Resist the urge to reach out to the side where the water would be if you are actually taking a stroke. And don't reach down the centre line of the kayak. I want that hand going directly forward from the shoulder. This will give you an accurate measurement regardless of what kayak you're sitting in. Once you've reached forward as far as you can, you're going to take a pencil and you're going to mark the inside of where your thumb meets your index finger on your hand there. So we're marking basically the centre of your grip. Now that you've got that spot marked on your kayak, you can go ahead and measure the width of your kayak at that spot. This is actually kind of tricky, trying to measure the width of a round object, but just do your best with whatever tools you've got available. Make it as accurate as you can. Now the reason we do this is because I think wider kayaks benefit from a little bit more reach on your paddle setup. So you can reach over the side of the kayak easier and get that more ergonomic catch. Faster kayaks with narrower catch zones are obviously not going to require as much reach distance on the paddle setup to get that ergonomic catch. Once you've established your boat width at your personal catch zone, it's now time to set your paddle reach that ranges between 12 and 20 centimeters. For reference, if it helps, I'm 185 centimeters and when I sit in my Flow Aspire, which is the boat I paddle most often at the moment, and I measure my boat width at my catch zone, that comes out to 47 centimeters wide there. And the paddle reach that I choose to get that good catch is 16 centimeters. Every now and then I paddle a Barracuda Enigma. 
and when I measure the width of the bow at my catch zone there, it comes out wider, 54 centimeters. And to compensate for that, I'll use a longer reach distance on my paddle of 18 centimeters, which is quite long. And for those days where I jump in my trusty Barracuda beachcomber, it's got quite a, a wide distance at the catch zone that measures 57 centimeters for me, which is 10 centimeters wider than my flow aspire. So for that, on my paddle, I set myself up with a juicy 19 centimeters of reach from my hand to the power face. Now, if you're about the same height as me, but are paddling much faster, narrower kayaks, like the Flow Rush, for example, that's gonna have a much narrower catch zone. And so I think you should adjust your paddle so it's got a much smaller reach down to something like 12 centimeters. Now, if you're quite a bit shorter than I am and you sit in the same kayak as me, your forward reach is not gonna be as long, right? And so your catch zone is gonna increase due to the curvature of the kayak getting wider towards the seat. So in the ideal world, if you're quite a bit shorter than I am, you should actually be in a slightly narrower kayak and you should find it just as stable as I do because of your lower center of gravity. But the main benefit there is that you've got a slightly narrower boat for your shorter arms so you can still get that comfortable ergonomic catch without having to feel like you're reaching over some super wide kayak and, and therefore having to adjust your paddle reach to something kind of ridiculously long. Now, if there's no getting around that and you are quite short and you are using quite a wide kayak, I would adjust your reach distance on your paddle setup to a maximum of 20 centimeters. And I think once you start getting longer than that, you start to really increase the leverage that your body is going to be experiencing from that extra length on the paddle and things get kind of ridiculous. So max out at 20 centimeters reach distance. So step one should now be complete. You have selected a reach distance for your paddle setup based on the width of your kayak's catch zone. You can now go ahead and mark the reach distance on your paddle shaft. Just grab some electrical tape and wrap that around the shaft. Once you've marked the position of the outside of your hand on your paddle shaft, a lot of people like to also mark the inside position and even wrap around the shaft with tape several times to create a thick bump there. And this can help your hands stop wandering along the shaft, which is a common issue, particularly with novices, as they get started with paddling and don't realize that their hands are actually creeping in or creeping out as they paddle. Cool, so now you've got your grip position in relation to where the blades are. Now all that's left to set is our ideal grip width. And for that, we're gonna use an adjustable shaft. So we want our hands to be at the optimum width for maximum strength. And I found that the best way to establish this for um, all different sized people is to experiment with a couple of push-ups on the ground. And if you're serious about your kayak training, I'm sure you've been doing push-ups as part of your kayak training routine, so you'll be familiar with these. Do some push-ups, but experiment carefully with your hand width. Try going a little wider and a little narrower and see where you personally feel the strongest. Once you've found the width where you think your hands are strongest for a push-up, you can leave your hands there and ideally have a helper uh, grab your adjustable paddle and just lay that across um, above where your hands are and adjust the shaft so that those markings, those wraps of tape that we put on earlier, line up with your hand position on the ground. If you don't have a helper, that's all good. You just need to do a little bit of trial and error as you shift your hands, then move the paddle shaft to get it just right. Once you think you have your paddle length adjusted so that the tape we put on earlier lines up with your hands doing your optimum push-up, then you can lock the adjuster on the paddle and you've now set your paddle length perfectly. Now some of you might be thinking, oh I don't even have a paddle yet, I'm thinking you're buying one, how do I order the correct length paddle for me using this method that I've suggested. Okay, you can still do it, it's just going to require a little bit of um, rough maths. What you can do is jump on the ground, do your push-ups, experiment with the width, mark the position of the outside of each hand and that's going to give you your grip width. Then you're going to add on to that your estimated reach distance to the blades times two and then you're going to add on the length of each blade times two. Total that together 
and that's going to give you your overall tip to tip paddle length. So once you've got your total there, you've got your estimated paddle length, so you can go ahead and order a paddle. Now without actually having the paddle there and experimenting with it, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to uh, get that perfect on the first shot. So what I'd suggest is you always order a paddle with an adjustable shaft. It'll give you 10 centimeters of adjustment range and you should just order it so that whatever your tip to tip estimate was there falls roughly center in that adjustment range. And that way you've got five centimeters either side to play with it and get it just right later. So that's it, that's my new system for setting up paddle length and grip width for myself and all my clients. I've been getting awesome results with it. I'm really happy with the system at the moment. But like I said, I've been wrong about this in the past. So I'm always open to uh, refining the system and making it better, even changing it up completely if better information comes to hand. So if you've got any ideas, comments, or suggestions about it, feel free to put those in the comments. I'm like so aware that everyone's boats, bodies, paddles are like totally different and there's, the more you think about it, the more complicated it feels when you're thinking about how to create a system where you can quickly set up like perfect ergonomics for a forward stroke. It's like quite mind blowing. I'm Sam Milne, kayak coach at Canterbury Kayaking in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Yay.